Welcome to Apismas Discover, we present the best and the coolest toys, apps and educational projects. Today our guest is Miles from Robotical Limited and we'll be talking about the robot called Marty the Robot V2. Hello Miles. Hi Dorota, lovely to be here today. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Welcome to the show. Can you tell us what is it or who is it Marty the Robot and who is it for? Of course. Well, I'll, I'll show you Marty. Marty's joined me today and is right here. Marty is a fantastic educational programmable robot, walking, dancing, eyebrow wiggling, designed to inspire the next generation of roboticists and engineers. And Robotico, the company that I work for, were founded in 2016 by a real roboticist, Dr. Sandy Ina, who was studying a PhD in robotics at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. And whilst he was studying this PhD, he had a niece who was quite interested in what he was doing. Yet everything on the market at the time to inspire a, a girl like her was either you know, expensive, very academic, difficult to use, or else simply a novelty remote control toy. There wasn't really uh, something that Sandy felt reflected the type of robotics work he was doing at an accessible, you know, in an accessible way for this next generation. So he came up with Marty, this fun character, and uh, he was determined to get Marty into schools around the world. And so he founded Robotical, and I joined uh, in the early days of the company's foundation. And subsequently, we've now grown the team, and we've sold over 7,000 robots worldwide. And could you tell us who is it for? What's the age of the people who play with Marty, learn with Marty? So Marty the Robot is designed for kids primarily 8 to 12 years old. You know, older primary school kids or younger uh, secondary school kids primarily. But there is a bit of leeway either way. So we do actually with Marty version 2 have a screen free function that allows teachers to introduce robots to a slightly younger age group as well. And if you really get on great with Marty, you can add new sensors, you can connect Marty to a Raspberry Pi, and you can program in real languages like Python, uh, which makes the robot suitable for some older children too. Um, but we felt for our marketing purposes and for the company's mission, it was best if we focused on this older primary school age group or younger high school age group, because it was at this point that we think that many kids are put off doing STEM subjects for whatever reason. Um, and we wanted to change that, make STEM more accessible for a wider range of kids, not just potentially you know, the stereotype of, of person who might be interested in, in maths and physics. Um, we wanted people to think, well, this can be really good fun and it's suitable for girls, boys, whoever. Um, and we think if we target this age group, uh, we have a better chance of increasing the amount of kids who are interested in studying STEM throughout school and university. Uh, we've got our own Marty. Can you tell us, uh, can you show us how to play, work and learn with it? Yes, I'd be, I'd be delighted to. So um, I have Marty here in front of me and uh, whilst obviously it would be nice to be uh, interviewing in person to show exactly how Marty works, it's great that you've got one in front of you too. But what I'm going to do is just show you a bit of, of how to how to program Marty. And to do this, I'm just going to share my screen, Dorota, if you don't mind. Uh, you might just have a look at my screen. Can you see that there? Yes, perfectly. So what I have here is a program called Scratch. Now, Scratch allows you to build a sequence of events using block code um, to program a robot but this, this is a programming language suitable for kids because rather than typing commands on the screen, you have pre-built blocks that make the programming and the idea of sequencing very accessible. So I'm just going to start right from the beginning here. If I wanted to create an event, okay, so this could be uh, if or something is clicked, then something will happen. So I, I'm going to drag across this block here when the green flag is clicked. Okay, so that's a simple command, an event that is defined by this uh, sequence. Um, I then can bring up my Marty robot blocks. I'm going to get ready because it's always useful to get Marty's motors in uh, functioning. 
and ready to go. So like in, in sports, you might want to be in a ready position. Uh, Marty does too as a humanoid robot. So let's put that get ready block in. And I'm going to start with a fun block that a lot of kids love. It's the wiggle. Um, and this means when I press this green flag here, Marty will get ready and wiggle. So if I stop sharing the screen, I'm now going to show Marty. So again, I'm just going to get Scratch uh, ready to go. And um, when I press the green flag, Marty should get ready and then wiggle. <laughs> exactly. And that's really super easy for kids to get started to see how a robot can function and can be programmed. And we've got many other blocks too. So, for example, I could get Marty to go in a circle. I could get Marty to change um, the eyes so that they're, they're wider, uh, expressing some kind of emotion. I could get Marty to kick with the left leg, perhaps, and score a goal. Um, I could get Marty to slide to the left or slide to the right. Um, and I could get Marty to walk backwards, forwards, left and right. So these are all really simple instructions to understand. Yet, by programming a real physical robot, you create what can be you know, quite a dry subject programming on the screen. And it demonstrates to the kids how programming can have real life consequences. In this case, we're moving a robot that it might be something else entirely that you are able to do if you learn a bit about coding and programming. Is Scratch the only language you can um, program Marty or is there any other ways to program him? Great question. So um, Marty, we've designed to work with Scratch because it's such an accessible platform and a great way to start. But I mentioned that the, towards the start of the interview that you know some kids uh, may, may be able to develop with Marty and go on, improve their skills and scratch so that they get to the level where they're very comfortable getting Marty moving around using these blocks. And perhaps they want to use a real coding language that is used in the workplace. And so in those instances, we, we recommend Python as a really good coding language that's used around the world by professionals in many different countries. But it's also a language that is seen as, as being fairly accessible and a good place to start learning about uh, more advanced coding and programming. So Marty the Robot is also compatible with Python. And, uh, and yeah, schools, uh, teachers, and students can get programming at, at using this text-based language with Marty as well. Is it any way to expand or customize your Marty? A another good question. Yes, yeah, so Marty is designed to be customizable. And um, so uh, on a simple level, in your box, Marty the Robot box, you have access to a number of stickers. So you can, you know, for younger kids, it's really good fun. I'm just gonna see if I can show you some of these stickers. Um, they might be uh, different mouths or eyes, eye colors, um, plasters, tattoos, whatever it is, you can add to your Marty. Um, and yeah, kids can have fun. You know, making their Marty uh, in their image or very much their own personalized version. So at a basic level, you can you can have that kind of artistic element. But there's other things you can do too. So one of the really cool things about version two is that we have a few sensors that are available with this robot. Um, again, I'm not sure how well you can see here, but on the foot of Marty, I have a color sensor that's attached. You may have it um, on your side as well. Now, this is a really cool development. Um, and again, it's something that you can add to your robot so that I could program Marty not even using another computer simply by using some color cards. So in this instance, I'm going to select at the back of Marty's head. There's a button here. If I press that button, I go into screen free mode. OK, and this means that I can use a color card to create an instruction. So um, let me take the color green. This means that Marty will move forward once the color sensor recognizes 
that it's standing on the green color. Okay, so again, this is something that it can be really exciting for kids because it's quite, uh, yeah, quite an interesting to understand that a color sensor in the foot, a robot can can have that recogni recognition and intelligence uh, that would maybe be usually associated with with a human. So um, yeah, there's an example of a sensor that you could add to Marty to give a bit of extra functionality. Um, there are other sensors too, distance sensors, for example. Uh, if I attach a distance sensor to Marty and waved, you could program Marty to recognize this movement and react to that movement. So if it was a wave, maybe Marty waves back or maybe Marty runs away. Who knows? Um, there's things like that that you can do. So, so yeah, lots of sensors. Um, I'll give you a list. We've got uh, light sensors as well, so you can react to different colors of light. Uh, noise sensors react to a clap, for example. And then we've got things like Disco Marty, where you can program Marty to light up in many different colors. Um, and in the pipeline, we're looking at a gripper hand as well. So uh, Marty can be programmed to actually pick up things uh, with the gripper hand. So yeah, you can customize Marty however you like. I see. Uh, where can we find more information how to play or learn with Marty? Yeah, um, a good question again. So uh, the best place to go for information about Marty is via the Robotical website. So if you go to robotical.io, you'll get our homepage and a, a, a link to many different things. Um, perhaps the most interesting is a learning resources uh, site whereby you can uh, find many examples of lesson plans and activities that you can do as a teacher or educator in the classroom um, with, with students who are learning about robotics for the first time or with students who are quite comfortable coding and programming. So there's many hours worth of lessons that are completely free to use on our website. So I would encourage anyone who's interested to have a look at the resources that are on offer. You will find the information, uh, the viewers will find the information about the resources under the, in the description under the video. But uh, you mentioned the schools. Is it a robot, is it a toy or a product uh, for uh, schools and educators or for a private use? So if a parent buys uh, the robot, will he or she manage to, to learn or to introduce the robot to the child? Of course, we think uh, Marty can be used both at home and at school. Um, I have to say, as an organization, we are, until to date, we've been focused on getting Marty into as many schools as possible, as we feel that through schools, we can really reach a lot of different children. So most of our efforts in terms of the commercial aspect are have been targeting schools. But of course, um, parents who wish to introduce their kids to coding, programming, and robotics at home are very welcome to have a look at our website and, and purchase a Marty. And they can be um, you know, uh, safe in the knowledge that there are lots of resources and activities designed to help educators uh, in classrooms. And parents, of course, can use many of these materials as well if they're wanting to do a bit of homeschooling, for example, during this coronavirus pandemic that's affecting so many of us. Um, or, uh, you know, or just for fun, um, something as a, as a kind of uh, a great way to, to learn about coding and technology together. Uh, Marty can certainly, I, I've learned a lot about uh, programming since uh, working with Robotical. I think many parents too would be encouraged by the learning progression that's available with this product. Um, and that makes it, it makes it, you know, fun and easy to use, not only for the child, but for the adult too. So could you tell us how much does it cost and where to buy it? Of course. So we have a few different ways of, pur of purchasing Marty. Usually uh, schools would buy the product. And so that means that usually uh, Marty is purchased in terms of a classroom pack. And um, so that might be, we call it a, a code club bundle of five. Um, or it may be a small class back of, of 10 robots, or it could be a standard class back of 15 robots, all the way up to a school 
multi-class bundle, which is 50 robots plus all the sensors that you'll need to customize the product. So um, to answer your question, it's, it's, it's a bit tricky. It depends what you're buying. Um, but you know, for, for a single unit, you'd be looking at a £299 purchase, um, excluding VAT uh, for Marty the Robot version 2. Um, so you know, that includes the robots. It also includes a color sensor, and an infrared sensor for sensing when the robot is close to a wall. It includes a st getting started guide, the lessons, as I've mentioned previously, uh, and some color cards uh, to get you started with screen-free programming. So there's, a, there's quite a, a few parts within that pack, and you can purchase that at shop.robotical.io. If you're a school, looking at a school pack, um, the bundles of five we start with, the smaller school pack, uh, that's a £1,675 uh, purchase, and that includes five robots, um, five IR sensors, five color sensors, one distance sensor, um, a pack of color cards, all the teaching resources that you need, um, ping pong balls uh, to use uh, for robot football, um, as well as uh, build guides, screwdrivers, and all the packaging, uh, as, and uh, spare batteries, five spare batteries, as well as the, the robot's batteries, and a charging cradle, so that a teacher can charge all five batteries at the same time. So there's a, there's a huge amount of resource in that kit. We call it a classroom in a box. And that bundle, again, can be seen at shop.robotical.io. Miles, thank you very much for the interview. It was really nice to meet you and Marty. And I hope, I'm sure we'll have great time uh, playing, learning, or learning and working with it. Thank you very much. Dorota, thank you very much for having both myself and Marty on your show. We really appreciate it and we look forward to keeping in touch. We wish you all the best and uh, fingers crossed we get through this, this pandemic as soon as possible and we have more ability to, to meet up in person again. But for the meantime, thank you for, for having me on the show.